Hello. So I would like to continue my videos about Rambom John's miracles, psychic powers and events which would be in the category of magic, maybe. Oh, there is so much of that and I will describe in this video the ones which I experienced in Hull, Korea because there are a lot of strange things which I experienced also already in Europe when I started to connect to him in meditation. So, uh, there is a long story. I never had the chance to tell all the story about my banning by Bom John. And that was that was something uh, un not possible for me to understand because I uh, left in Europe my job. Uh, I gave back my rented flat, long time rented flat, and I even finished my relationship with my boyfriend, with wh who was still helping uh, Bom John to resend the sponsored sponsorship money from other followers because we were helping the cult to get the European, American, Australian money con, uh, focused into one bank account in Nepal so that all the fees and taxes are uh, not needed to pay. And uh, I separated from my boyfriend telling him I am going to live in celibacy in deep meditation at the Buddha boy in Nepal and I arrived there in January 2011 and uh, they invited me, Andrea Good and the Bodhisravan Dharma Sangha invited me to help Andrea with the translating together with Kempo Sonam Gürme and um, editing Bom John's so-called teachings. But it's, it's another story, he never had any teachings. Um, he, he's just um, dictating something to Kempo, which apparently Kempo changed into Buddhist sounding text. Anyway, uh, after Andra returned to Japan in around February 2011, I was the only foreigner there staying. And then later on, some other foreigners came and go, came and go, but I was the main the, the, the permanently staying Hull Korea foreigner resident at that time. And I stayed in a tent and I was very happy. Bon John himself didn't even show up many times. Practically we have seen him at best maybe once a 10 days. And we were staying in that Hull Korea and we imagined he might be somewhere in that inside compound, but it was a secret. No one knew where he actually is. And uh, we believed he's there. We were living their lives, serving his purpose, translating his um, molam, as Kempo Sunam Gürme called the prayers. And in that time, I was quite happy because uh, I realized my connection to the jungle the amazing connection with the sounds, uh, fragrances, the vibration of a deep Tarai Asian jungle. And it reminded me, now these videos are not about secular topics, not about scientific topics, so sorry for those people who don't believe in this stuff. I would lie if I don't, if I keep it back. So it reminded me of my past lives. Doesn't matter if you believe in past lives, I believe because many times I had experiences and proofs about my past lives. And I realized my extremely strong connection with the nature, with the jungle. And I fell in love with the jungle. Bom John's followers are so evil, so speculative and manipulative. They want to twist my love to Hal Korea as my love to Bom John. And I had a beautiful boyfriend in 
Europe. Now I cannot show his photo because I don't want him to get in trouble. But uh, I could never imagine such a beautiful boyfriend. Uh, uh, I'm not a beauty, but my boyfriend was beautiful and intelligent, a mathematician, a spiritual person, a vegetarian, a yogi. How could I have anyone better than he was? And uh, one of the main reasons why I separated from him and why I went to Nepal to meditate was that our child died. Uh, so in in my um, womb, but in a higher, in the fifth or um, six months of pregnancy. So that was very difficult for me, and I realized that I don't want to go this through this again. But there was no other reason to separate from him and to leave Europe than bomb John. But there were other part, smaller reasons, but. Uh, I just wanted to change my life back to what I was before, a yogini. And when uh, I was in Bom John's compound, in the imagination that he is also there and serving him, every day we had a kind of loose schedule with Kempo Sunam Gurme, which means he invited us to translate and it ended up with chatting, drinking tea and eating biscuits. Uh, Kempo was always looking after comfort and uh, it didn't really fulfill me. I realized I want more, I want to go deeper, I want to feel the connection with the nature. So then I, I stayed in that tent after Andra returned, I was alone. I was, I was praying every day, every night even, I put candles all around, maybe some followers remember and I was praying, meditating and 90% of my positive uh, the prayers fruit you could say had been shifted to Bomjon somewhere there in that in that jungle what I imagine that he might be there and I really loved the, the jungle and I wished him the best. Every day and every night I was uh, offering the fruits of my meditation, the fruits of my uh, tapasya to Bomjon. Everyone knows this, I was even writing articles about this. So the evil, speculative, manipulative accusations of Bomjon himself, because he's a demon, <laughs> he will never appreciate good people's prayer for him. He will be angry that you are praying for him because it shows your spiritual attainment. It shows your noble heart. He hates that. A demon hates that, yes? Doesn't matter that he is the objective of, of your well-wishing. He hates the principle of unselfish radiating of love and prayer and good wish. He hates that. And again, I want to emphasize, it's not love of a woman to a man. Bomjun was around 20 years at that time, and I was already 43. And I had left a beautiful boyfriend in Europe, not because I was in love with Bomjun, but because I was ready to support him till the end of his life, to the end of my life, because I was, I was thinking he is an enlightened, he is in the way of enlightenment, that he's a child. I lost my child in Europe, so Bomjon was like a replacement for my motherly feeling. He was in the age of my child. I was 43, he was 20. I could have him already as my child. But obviously there are so many proof th proofs that I was a supporter of Bomjon. So Google group members, 700 members, they all have in their inboxes my emails, my praising emails and my emails about prayers. But they will not use that proof because they are lying and they want to prove the opposite. They want to prove that I was a witch, that all those two months in Hal Korea I was doing black magic to Bomjun. And even Ivy Jugoa, Andrea Good, even the Europeans and the Americans even 
who stayed there near my tent and we were speaking about Bon John together, we were praising him together, we were working on the translation of his molam. Even those very people accuse me now of being a witch, not now, in the last nine years already. Anyway, at this uh, time when I was happy in Hal Korea, connected with the jungle, with the animals, the wild animals, the birds, uh, just take it in, in Nepal there are 800 types of birds in the jungles and in Europe 300-400. So also thanks to the weather most of these birds stay there all year long and uh, the cuckoos and uh, bulbuls and um, so many birds, I don't know the name of all of them. It's amazing the, the crickets, uh, there are so many types of cricket sounds. Uh, and cicadas, uh, you just get from the vibration of this jungle, you get totally enchanted. And now imagine when I was so happy in that jungle, then in February Bon John told that I have to move out, that all foreigners have to move out suddenly. But I had been invited there forever by Andrea Good. She even told me, wrote me, bring everything what you have she even moved their chairs, plastic chairs and the tarps to work and little tables. She was also sincere in the beginning. So she also believed we will live there forever in the compound of Halkoria and serve Bomjon. And then she went home and then I am alone and I worked a few weeks on the translations and suddenly Bomjon tells I have to move out. Not only me, all the foreigners. But they uh, humbly moved out, they didn't mind, because they didn't like the forest so much. None of them went in the burning sun into the riverbed to sit there hours and hours in meditation, like I did. None of them meditated outside in the open jungle, uh, danger in the risk of tigers, wild elephants, snakes, uh, scorpios. We, we even, the monks of Kempo Sonam Gyurme, the child monks, once brought a scorpio to show, such a big scorpio. Uh, it is a reality. There are, I saw snakes, yeah, many, karet, one of the most dangerous poisonous snake. I have seen a karet in Hal Korea. I will saw a um, um, cobra. So there were snakes, scorpios, Mm, wild elephants, tigers, leopards, uh, black bear, everything you can imagine. But I risked because I, was, I loved them, I loved the nature and I risked and I stayed and meditated outside at night, outside in the jungle, in front of my tent. Anyway, a tent from, from a textile, what protection does it give? Nothing. Only when I had menstruation, because I realized that uh, the, the smell of the blood uh, does something really with animals. So they were coming more near and they were more... Um, the energy from them was not good. So during my menstruation I moved into the women's house, which was that wooden house where Manu, Ani, uh, Nang Salji, uh, Palchenmo and others were sleeping. And so I had this beautiful lifestyle, meditating, knowing the jungle, going deep into the consciousness of the jungle and cut Bonjon, who tells, who considers that jungle his own property, he now tells that I have to move. Of course, I was a woman, I couldn't risk to go out from a compound to... <laughs> now I know I could risk because the most danger was Bonjon's compound, but that time, I imagine just please, that time I was still thinking that Though that compound of Bomjon provides me with some security, water, food sources, there was drinking water, possibility to wash, um, and it was practically near to the highway, just six kilometer walk. And then suddenly I had to go out, I had nowhere to go. And I didn't want to go to the Ratanpuri settlement where Bomjon's former meditation tree was and where all the foreign, foreigners had been shifted and Kempo Sunan Gurme because in that place that was just near the Ratampuli village 
it was very frequented. It didn't have that energy of Halkoria, of the, of the pure, deeper jungle. It was like uh, shepherds were coming and going there with goats and it was dry and there was water problem, drinking water was um, polluted, people got sick from that and uh, very uh, not possible to put up the tent. There was not good energy there. And I thought I didn't want to live in a narrowly narrow narrow community where I didn't have enough privacy for my own meditation. I didn't need Bomjon to lead my meditation because I had my guru, Ramana Maharishi, and I had my yoga practice from my 16th years already. So I'm not a person who went there to Bomjon to learn anything. I'm a person who went there to give, to share and to defend and protect him, as many of us, um, and to help to propagate him, to get him famous in the world. I, I sincerely thought that he was a positive being uh, for this world. And so I had to move out and uh, I had nowhere to go. So just Badur Vaiba offered me his house in Pilua, which was a good option because it was very near to Halkoria, only six kilometers near the Passa Bridge, just at the highway, the village on the opposite side of Halkoria. So I could still go for longer walks to Halkoria and, and uh, reconnect with the jungle. I didn't need to go inside Bomjon's compound and I was banned from there. And uh, it was hurting me because uh, I wanted to live in Hal Korea. It was my, from childhood, I knew I, I am a person who, wa who lived or will live. I mean, lived in past lives or will live in, in a jungle, in a deep forest, in a spiritual life. I always had this vision and Hal Korea fulfilled me that vision. And Bom John moved me out and until I was five months in, in just Badur Vaiba's house, that was all okay because I used to go to Hal Korea and uh, enjoy the forest and then come back to his house. And I had the facilities, the friendly environment of his family. It was nice. And problems started when uh, I had to leave even Vaiba's house, because Bom John's, Bom John and his committee, Bodhisattva Dharma Sangha, started to harass me and gossip me about uh, abnormal things, like I am supposed to, when I was walking in Hal Korea, that I am a witch, that I go there to harass Bom John sexually, that I go there to make black magic, because people, if they don't understand meditation, they have a pure meditation, not like Bom John's performance, but I was going alone. Who goes alone in Nepal to a jungle? A woman, that, that time younger woman. It is always in Nepal, then they start to suspect you are a witch because normal woman would just not go alone in the jungle. And I was sleeping in trees sometimes and I, I didn't cross the barbed wire fence of Bom John's encroached jungle compound because I was scared of them. There were just two occasions I did it. Once when I saw a big fire burning there and I was worried of Bom John <laughs> being hurt by the fire and his followers. So I went there to help to extinguish, extinguish the fire. Uh, but that was a planned fire. Uh, there, is, there are many strange things in Nepal. They are burning, do, doing fire to make the yes, the vegetation to to burn it out so it's flat. Uh, so uh, I was the only one who was extinguishing that fire. It was tall, like to the trees. No one cared about it. Anyway, second time was when I returned the the puppy, the puppy which I and Andrea we raised her. Her name was Puppy, and she didn't have any good people in Halkori anymore when I had to move out. So she found out that I am in that Pilua village. She was just wandering alone, a small white puppy. I was so 
scared for her because uh, wild animals attack dogs, especially leopards, tigers not. And so I was scared that she would be, if she's always crossing this long jungle just to get to me in Pilwa, then I, I brought her back to Bomb John's compound once personally uh, with a um, flea collar and uh, with food, milk powder. And <laughs> that was also a story. Anyway, um, they always accused me, uh, even if I cared so much not to go to his compound inside, but I was from outside. Uh, I went to that place because it was a nostalgic feeling for me. I loved that place. I lived there quite a few months and I got connected. Uh, I did the puja, I made the rituals, prayers, burning candles, incense sticks. I got connected to that spot where I used to meditate. So I was returning to that place. And also, I went there to question Bom Joon uh, innerly. Why did you de do this to me? Why did you move me out? I love this jungle. I belong to here. And that's why uh, many people know, but I am repeating it. That's why when Bom Joon uh, kidnapped me in December 2011, that's why he told his followers, now, Marici, ha ha ha, you can be forever in, in Nal Korea, be always you wanted to be here, but you will be here on chains until the end of your, your life. So he was mocking me uh, and torturing me because of my love to the jungle. There are uh, irrational or how to say invisible non-material experiences which connect me to the jungles of Nepal and especially Hal Korea. But it's not because of Bonjon, I realized. It's because of the jungle's history. Uh, we see just the jungle today, yes? But we don't realize that thousands and thousands of years ago in those jungles, there had been human settlements, there had been temples, and there had been rishis living there. So especially Hal Korea was a connection with Kathmandu, and uh, India. You just, I also made a trip to Hetauda, which is um, just under Kathmandu. Uh, you just cross the Ratanpuri hills and you get to Hetauda. And so I love that place and I used to go there meditating again and again, nearly every second day, sometimes every day. And Vaiba himself, an ardent follower of Bom Joon, and his right hand in bribes, that time I didn't know, of course, uh, he was uh, suspicious. 